I'm worried I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I already saw a number I don't you like. Which oh. one? Oh my god, I'm not white. Like at all. Oh my god. Are you even, even Latina even. at this point? I'm kidding. I ah. am. Who, who's gonna tell her? Oh, I, I know. You're 4% <laughs> less colonized than I am. Congratulations. It's not an ethnic DNA test you need, but an IQ test. Oh no, European. Hello my friends, today we'll be reacting to this video, Latinos take a DNA test. Long story short, these are Latinos that live in the United States. Very important detail. And essentially, they're shocked to discover that they're white. <laughs> And for this video, I got the nice Papi Cubano trim. I don't want to spoil you more than that, so are you ready? Let's go! Finally, oh to find God. out if I'm 100% Puerto Rican. Wh what? What does that even mean? 100% Puerto Rican? Oh man, you're gonna be disappointed. Do you even know what an ethnic DNA test does? <laughs> I really hope that I get full 100% Mexican, 100% Mexican. 100%. If I don't get 100% Mexican, I'm gonna be sad. And here's someone else that is about to be shocked. Unless you look like this, how can you expect 100% Mexican native? I don't think anyone in the production team actually bothered to tell them how an ethnic DNA test actually works and what results to expect. Mexican or Latino is not a race. For example, all the people you can see here are Mexican, born in Mexico, Mexican culturally, Mexican passport, whatever you can think of. As you can see, 50 shades of skin color. But what binds Latinos together is not race, but the fact that they all speak Spanish. Hispanohablantes, aka a result of Spanish colonization. I'm from the DR and Sri Lanka, so like, there's some black in there. Check out the big brain on bread. But my mom's last name is very white, so something weird probably happened there. Monica, Monica, you probably have some European DNA. I mean, I think it's her mom that's Sri Lankan. Well, not many people know that Portugal actually colonized Sri Lanka for 150 years, from 1508 to 1658. The Portuguese also controlled all the African coast up to Sri Lanka or Ceylon. And this is why you have many coastal cities in Africa with Portuguese sounding names like Lagos in Nigeria and Porto Novo in Benin. Now the Portuguese were famous for handing out their surnames like it often happened when people converted to Catholicism or through intermixing with the locals. Anyway, if we took at the top three most common surnames in Sri Lanka, we get Pereira, Fernando and De Silva. So in the end, I think it's very likely that she has some evil colonizer DNA. I want to know like how much like indigenous I have. That's like the main thing I want to know. Ah, Vanessa, <laughs> Vanessa, you seem to be the smartest in the group. Not only because he completely laughed at the Mexican dude when he expected 100% Mexican results. 100% Mexican, if I don't get 100%. But also because the main reason she's doing this test is to know how much indigenous ancestry she actually has. And that's very smart because DNA tests are exactly good at that. With high confidence, they can detect from what continent you're from. After that, let's be honest, the lines get very blurry. Anxious. I don't know what I am. Crisis. Carolina, yo soy tu padre. I'm nervous. I'm very nervous. I'm worried I'm white. I'm worried I'm white. No shame at all. Just imagine the public outrage if a white person said, Oh my god, no, I hope I'm not black. Oh my gosh, I'm 71.9% European. Hey! hey. <laughs> what a loser. You're white. Guess who's lame? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no! Shit! Bro, look at your face! Do you look more like this person from Italy? Or this indigenous Mayan? Or this sub-Saharan African from Senegal? Take your time. No rush. But I think we all know the answer. Spanish and Portuguese? I'm shocked that you're shocked. <laughs> I dare you! I double dare you! What language do you speak in Puerto Rico? As a matter of fact, the name Puerto Rico 
What does it mean? What language? Now, I know it sounds like a conspiracy theory, but Spanish comes from this place in Europe. I know, I know it's a crazy idea, and I know it's very far away from the Caribbean, but this is where you gotta trust me. People from this place called Spain actually sailed all the way to Puerto Rico. Now, more seriously, you can see that the test combines Spanish and Portuguese together, Iberian Peninsula. And this shows the limitations of these DNA tests. For them, the two groups are so close to one another that they can't differentiate it. 0.3% Italian. No wonder I like pasta so much. Bro, everybody likes pasta. Any result with 0. Point something percent is not to be taken seriously. It's more like a misread of the data. Some genealogists even go as far as to discredit any result below 2%. It's a very, very wide DNA test. Excuse me, you say that this is a very wide DNA test. I want to see your result. 3.2% <laughs> Congolese and Southern East African. Let's go to the Whoa, Congos. We're going to the Congos. Hey, come on, let's go. Just go there and let's see what's going to happen. What's interesting with this map of his African ancestry is that you can clearly see where the Spanish picked up all the slaves, literally from the entire west coast of Africa. Recent ancestry in the Americas, Caribbean. Ponce, Puerto Rico. Wow, wow. Ponce! I got some blood in Ponce there, eh? Modern DNA tests are also very good at detecting these DNA clusters. The place is in the world where the people have the most similar DNA mixture as yours. And yes, it points to Puerto Rico. So yes, you're 100% Puerto Rican. Also notice that in his results, they say that some people in Cuba have the same mix as his. And that's very interesting because fun fact, Cuba and Puerto Rico were the last Spanish colonies in the Americas, which they lost in 1898. I'm honestly very surprised at the fact that I have more indigenous American blood than African blood. Okay, so he got 10% Sub-Saharan African, 16% indigenous, but our friend Ivan didn't speak about the 1.1% North African, probably because he thought it was related to... Let's go to the Congo! But it's very interesting to me from a historical perspective. Certainly a small trace of the Muslim conquest of the Iberian Peninsula. But funny how everyone gets mad at the European colonization of the Americas. But when the others did it... Oh! Oh, what? No, oh, I, I, oh, I don't know. Oh, I already saw a number I don't you like. Which oh. one? 44% European. I guess you have to pay reparations now. This, uh, look, the proof, you, you have to pay 44% reparations. Okay, I can see it. I, I was expecting more. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see how she's roasting him? Ah, Vanessa. Um, 46.9%. East Asian Indigenous American. Okay. Okay, okay. I got those native roots, you know, yes. very in touch. You're so in touch with the roots that you probably don't even speak any Mexican indigenous language. So in touch that you're happy that the test simply says indigenous without specifying what tribe. Mayan, Nahua, Zapotec. No, it's just indigenous. Anyway, Chris, now you can relax. This confirms that you're Mexican. 50% European, 50% native. Where's Mexico? Oh my God, is this guy for real? It's not an ethnic DNA test you need, but an IQ test. 1% Jewish. Okay, take a look at the chart behind me. If every generation is on average 25 years, so in theory, 1% would be around 175 years ago, around the 1850s. But if every generation is on average 35 years, then it sets us back 250 years ago or the 1770s. And that's only if the genes come from the same parent. It's also important to know that if we inherit 50% of our DNA from our father and our mother, we don't necessarily get 25% DNA from each of our grandparents, meaning your brother and sister could have different results. Okay, let's go back to the 1% Jewish. I read that DNA tests have a hard time detecting Sephardic Jewish ancestry, essentially the Jews from North Africa were essentially a mix from Semites from the Middle East and that mixed up with local Berbers from North Africa. So long story short, DNA tests often get confused and simply put Ashkenazi Jewish. Because of that 
similar portion of Jewish DNA. Oh yeah, the Ashkenazi Jewish could also be a misread from the data. This guy explains it pretty well. In the context of Ashkenazi Jews, this Canaanite related DNA levels at around 20%, which makes them more genetically similar to Italians and Greeks. Which could explain why they get Italian and Jewish ancestry. Okay, but now let's suppose it's actual Jewish DNA. Why would a Mexican have it? Long story short, after the Reconquista in 1492, many Jews and Muslims were forced to convert to Catholic faith. So they would still have this Jewish DNA, but they would be Catholic Spanish. Some of them went to the new world to create a new identity for themselves. Oh, hold on, the Puerto Rican guy also has 0.8% Ashkenazi Jewish. I'm pretty sure that 1.1% North African and that Jewish ancestry comes from the same ancestor, aka Muslim converts. It even tells you like what part of Mexico I'm from, that's wild. Nuevo Leon, Jalisco. Jalisco is known for like a little bit more white, a little bit like colored eyes. Chihuahua, you already know baby, that's where I'm from. El Norte, El Paso, Texas, shout out 915. But again, this further demonstrates that DNA clusters are very accurate. If you take a look at this map, South Mexicans are indeed much more indigenous than the ones from the North. 0.4% Italian. I think that's why I dress so well. If you say so. Again, 0.5% is not very significant. I also read that DNA tests sometimes confuse Iberic with Italian. Because yes, there was also a lot of mix between the two. Essentially, what it says is that we noticed 0.4% of your DNA similar to in Italy. Remember that the first Spanish tercios were deployed in Italy, more precisely in Lombardy, Naples, and Sicily. And it's very possible that these soldiers mingled with the locals. So it's possible that the DNA test detected a similar Spanish footprint in Italy. Would you be interested in a video about the DNA footprint of soldiers throughout history? Oh my god, I'm not white. Like at all. Oh thank god. <laughs> Monica! Monica. I'm speechless. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, the more I'm looking at this, the more I'm losing my brain cells. Southern Indian and Sri Lankan, 45.5%. Shocker. The other 36% is Sub-Saharan African. Are we surprised? No. Oh no. European. 10%. That is an amount I can allow. What is in fact shocking is that she has a very little Iberian ancestry compared to the others, but lots of Northwest European. She has the entire New World Colonizer starter pack. Spanish, Portuguese, French, and English DNA. Ah, Monica is gonna get expensive, lots of reparations. Now fun fact, in the 1600s, the island of Tortuga right here was inhabited by French and English pirates that would attack Spanish ships coming back full of gold from the Americas. I'm just saying that could explain the English and Irish DNA. She's probably related to Jack Sparrow. So my mom is from the Dominican Republic. Hold on, what? Your mom is the one from the Dominican Republic? Hold on, this changes everything. I also just noticed her last name is Moore. Probably that is the white Anglo-Saxon name she was referring to, which is in fact odd for the Dominican Republic. 5% DNA brings us back around 100 years ago. And what did happen in the DR around the 1920s? That's right, the United States occupation of the Dominican Republic. Thousands of American soldiers stayed from 1916 to 1924. And through consensual or non-consensual mingling, poof, baby. And since back then, most of them were of British or Irish ancestry, that means she's probably a direct descendant of a white American soldier. In a way, now she lives in the homeland. That didn't show up here at all. <laughs> so where did they come from? Catastrophic. I mean, I think the biggest joke, this farce, this masquerade, the production didn't tell them what the DNA test actually is. I'm assuming the 40% African is the Dominican. Yes. Yes, good assumption. You're, you're the clever one, I can see it. As far as I know, my mom's family has been in the DR, but maybe not even as many generations as they think. GG, well played. If only she paid attention in history class. Oh my gosh! I am 
99.7% European. Spanish and Portuguese, I'm 85.4%. Carolina, don't you remember what you said? I feel like I know it's gonna be Espanol, tío. Of course, after 300 years of colonization, that's longer than the existence of the United States. Plus all the Spanish people that migrated to Mexico after independence. For example, 25,000 Spanish refugees settled in Mexico between 1939 and 1942 after the Spanish Civil War, compared to 450,000 arrivals in the 17th century. As a matter of fact, you have more Spanish DNA than many people in some parts of Spain. I'm actually more surprised that she has as much as 9% indigenous ancestry. She also has some DNA feedback from Northwestern Europe, I would argue probably German immigrants that went to Mexico. There's a big community called Mennonites in Mexico, essentially Mexican Amish people. And these German speaking communities left Russia, long story, around 1870, and they all went to America exactly 150 years ago. So that would match the 1% DNA. I'm gonna call my mom about this. If you tell your mom that you're only 89% European, your Mexican mom will be mad. She's gonna deny it. She's gonna ask for the VAR. Mija, usually, you know, these tests inaccurate. We are 100% Spanish. Ah, you know, maybe it's la falta de tu papá, your dad's side. La mamá de tu papá, you know, very dark, you know. Every Mexican person has some native abuelita somewhere in the tree line. Not are you even, even Latina at this point? I'm kidding. I am. Who, who, who's gonna tell her? Oh. I know. And what's sad is that Mexicans deny this heritage, whereas Latinos that grew up in America deny their European heritage. Spanish and Portuguese, 27%. Welcome to the team. 40%, 40.9% East Asian and indigenous. I wanted 70 or 80. You're 4% <laughs> less colonized than I am. Congratulations. This guy, this guy, that's the only thing he could come up with. Don't you question the fact that you have 4% more indigenous ancestry than Vanessa. When you're clearly much paler and that colonizer thing. Bro, you are the colonizer. I dare him to open a book about Aztec history. All the conquering, all the slave trade they did to their neighbors. It got so bad that thousands of indigenous Mexicans sided with the Spanish conquistadors to topple the Aztec Empire. In 1521, during the Battle of Tenochtitlan, 98% of the Spanish army was actually indigenous. Let that sink in. I'm from Chinandega, which is number okay. three. All of El Salvador is lit up right now. I've never been to El Salvador, but I have like a bunch of departments. Once again, the DNA test correctly detected your true group. She's ethnically the most similar to Pacific Coast Nicaraguans. Northwestern European, British. I can see that, the class, the elegance that oh. you carry yourself with. <laughs> Clearly he hasn't seen drunk British tourists in Spain. Or English football supporters, another classy bunch. Hold on, 10% British ancestry is a lot. This brings us back to roughly 80 years ago. And what happened roughly 80 years ago in Nicaragua? <laughs> The United States occupation of Nicaragua from 1912 to 1933. She also said she's from Chinandega. And what happened in the area in 1932? The Battle of El Sauce, where US troops fought against local guerrillas, which confirms the presence of American soldiers in the area. Once again, horny American soldiers that mingled with the locals. I guess both Monica and Vanessa should talk to their grandmothers. <laughs> we had an ancestor from Lebanon. I don't see Lebanon here, so somebody lied. You were the chosen one! Vanessa, what is this? Egyptian, Levantine. Levantine is Lebanon. Fun fact, uh, I've been to Lebanon, but that's a very long story. What surprised you the most? <sighs> the 44% European. Like, no offense, no offense to the Europeans. <laughs> I'm not racist, but... I mean, you just say you're Mexican, and I'm Puerto Rican. And, and that's, that's it. that. Don't, don't think about it too much. Yes, you two are ethnically the closest to the people where you claim to come from. He's a mix of European, indigenous, and African like most people in Puerto Rico. And she has European and indigenous ancestry like most people in Mexico. 
And what binds you all together is the Spanish cultural heritage. That's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of my analysis. If you're new to this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support my work, make sure to check out my Patreon or PayPal to keep the show running.